All right. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Whenever you're watching this, good whatever. Uh, we're going to be doing Chapter 6, Factoring Questions from the Skills Practice Worksheet that you are using to prepare for your final exams. Skills Practice 15. And we're going to start with number one. This is asking you to do a factorization for this monomial. And the way you do a factorization is to break it down. Now this is asking you for a factorization, not a prime factorization, just a factorization. To break something down into factors, you simply need to divide it by itself. So 18 divides by itself, six times three would work. So let's do six times three times a cubed times b. That's one factorization of this monomial. Now we can break that down further and we can go 2 times 3 times 3 times a cubed times b. These are all factorizations. And that in fact is a prime factorization because all that's left are prime numbers. 2, 3, and 3 are prime numbers. a cubed b. Now we can even break these down. 2 times 3 times 3 times a squared times a times b. That's one way a squared times a times b. And if we really want to break it down as, as completely down to the very max, we actually factor this out too and we get 2 times 3 times 3 times a times a times a times b. That's a complete factorization of this monomial. All right, so that's the first few questions on your skills practice 15. Now we're going to move to number number five on um, your skills practice 15. It's y to the fifth plus 9y squared. y to the fifth plus 9y squared. Now these kind of questions, what we're looking for is plus 9y squared. So that's plus 9y squared. On these kind of questions, you're looking for a common factor. In fact, this is one of the first things you do in every factoring problem. You first look for your common factor. Now, in this case, there's no number that's in common to y to the fifth or nine, but there is the y. And in this case, the most we can actually, what we call take out of there, take out means divide. The most we can divide out of both is y squared. And I'm just going to pass me the green pen. And I'm going to do that here. So what we do for that is we divide by y squared. And what's left over, we put a y squared here and a bracket here. And the leftover goes into these spaces here. So y to the fifth divided by y squared is y cubed, if you subtract the exponents. And 9y squared divided by y squared is equal to 9. Y, so their final answer is y squared times y cubed plus 9. And that's the answer to number 5. So let's do a couple other ones. They're a little harder as we go down. Now you always do that before you go on. When you factor, you always take the common factor out first. Why? Because then you know what you're dealing with. Now if this were to factor further, you could you go ahead and factor that further. But in this case, it doesn't. y cubed plus 9 is not factorable. So you're done in this question. Now let's look at number, uh, let's look at number 9. 6a squared b cubed. So number 9. 6a squared b cubed minus, that's right, minus 14abc. Minus 14abc. Now in this question, we do have a common factor between 6 and 14. We can divide both 6 and 14 by 2. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, could we do it by anything else? 3? Three. 3 doesn't go into 14. It goes into 6. doesn't go into 14, so that won't work. Uh, 6 doesn't go into 14, so really 2 is the, the one that can go into both. So 2 is going to work. Uh, a squared and A are A is in common to both, and B is in common to both. C is not. So the thing we're going to factor out by here is 2AB. That's the most we can get out of both of them, 2AB. Why not 2a squared b? Well, it would work for this. a squared divided by a squared is equal to 1. But it wouldn't work for this because you'd get a divided by a squared, and that would be a problem. It would be a fraction. So you don't want that. So 
We take the 2AB, we put it over here on the outside of the brackets, and then on the inside, we get whatever is left over from these uh, division, whatever these quotients are. So 2AB, when it's divided into 6A squared, B cubed gives you 3, because 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3a, three because a squared divided by a is just a, so b cubed divided by b is b squared. Then minus 14 divided by 2 is 7. a divided by a cancels out, the b cancels with the b, and you're left with c, so it's 3a squared b minus 7c. That's what happens when you, the, the key to these problems is figuring out what to divide by. If you pick something bigger, it's, it doesn't quite work. If you pick something, if you leave something out, it won't be the lowest terms it can be here. So the trick is really to find that 2AB in this case to do it. Now we're going to move to difference of squares. This is actually, um, this kind of question comes up on 6-2 and we're going to start with a real simple one. Really simple difference of square problem is x squared minus 4. Now why do we call that difference of squares? Because of the minus sign and because of the squares. x squared is square, right? Because x times x is x squared. And 4 is a perfect square, too. What that really is is 2 squared. you got to know your perfect square. So let's write these down real quick. These should be in your memory. 2 squared equals 4. 3 squared equals 9. 4 squared equals 16. 5 squared equals 25. 6 squared equals 36. 7 squared equals 49, and it goes on and on and on, so forth. Now, really, you should have these memorized, but we've just written them down just to jog your memory. If you have these memorized, then you're going to recognize, as soon as you see them, you're going to recognize difference of squares. As soon as you see a minus sign and one of these numbers on the other side, then you're going to get something that looks going to be difference of squares. So, how do we factor that? Well, x squared minus 4, it's real simple you do a plus case and a minus case. So on one bracket, you have x minus 2. On the other, you have x plus 2. Go ahead and try that. x minus 2, x plus 2. Now, to check that, you'll see why it works. Because when you FOIL it back out, and I'll do this in green, x times x is x squared. x times 2 is plus 2x. And this, the inside, minus 2x, cancels and then you get minus 4. So you've got x squared minus 4. So that is what checks it out. The FOIL method is used to check out your factoring problems. But your answer for this one is right here. x minus 2, x plus 2. All right, let's do a little bit tougher one. This will be number, let's do, let's jump right into it and we'll do number 22. Number 22 is 100 minus 36n squared. 100 minus 36n squared. Well, if you know your difference of squares, you know it's a minus sign, and you know 100 is the perfect square, because it's 10, 10 squared, 36 is a perfect square, then this is really not that hard, all right? You just have to put your two brackets together, and you put your perfect square, your square root of 100 is 10. Go ahead and put 10. Now we've got minus, right, minus 6n and plus 6n. 10 minus 6n and 10 plus 6n. 10 minus 6n plus 6n. And you're done. Again, you can FOIL it to, to, to go ahead and check it. It'll be 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 6n is 60n. And then minus 6n times 10 is negative 60n. Those cancel out. And that's why this works. And then minus 6 times 6n is negative 36n squared. And we get our answer.